I'm Pete Holloway. I'm a retired financial advisor and a retired certified financial planner. And as always, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to Our Money. Today, we have one of our favorite guests, David Allender, who is the publisher of In Wheeling Magazine. And I think a lot of people uh, can remember the same feeling that I had when we saw that magazine the first time. It was a glossy, thick magazine, great photographs, great uh, writing in it. And it's about Wheeling. And most people were unfortunately quite negative about the area, got to feel pretty good about it. Um, the uh, I just received the latest issue, and we'll let's talk about that in a second, uh, in the mail, but you have an issue that is out right now that's about retail. Could you tell us a little about that? that that's actually, it's the previous issue. We're a little behind, we're, we're getting, getting caught up here. Um, but yeah, the re- Wheeling Retails, the reason we did that issue and the, the current issue and the next issue is about reminding people to support local businesses because we're, many people got into the habit and habits are hard to break, but they got in the habit of buying everything online, having everything shipped. And that's not always good for your local community because the local retailers hire people. They spend money locally. They go to the heating and ventilation people when their air conditioning breaks. They hire cleaning services. They pay taxes, all that sort of stuff that supports all the amenities that we have here locally. So all these issues are suggesting and helping the people of Wheeling to come back to purchasing and spending their money locally. So Wheeling Retails, we you want to start off with a base. So we went over the history of the department stores, because as we know, everyone in Wheeling is obsessed with their department stores that are long gone. And the article explains why. Because, and I, I think the reason is that those department stores were part of everyone's major milestones in life. They're part of, you, you go to for your birthday, you go and you get a gift, you go for first communion, you go for graduation, you go for wedding gifts. So I think that's why people connected so well with them. So we did that. Susan Jones uh, wrote that article. She's a retired uh, teacher from Wheeling Park High School. Uh, and then we went into a really important, cool article on Wheeling's locally owned specialty retailers. The key, and there, there's a whole variety of them, and the readers can take a look at it in, 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 in this issue here in case you haven't seen it. But those retailers are successful because all of them are offering things that you can't get anywhere else. For example, the Smart Center. The things that they have in terms of learning tools and uh, science tools you can't walk into Walmart and get stuff like that. You probably can't even find it on Amazon, but they have it all. And it's there. And there's people that come from all over to buy from that store. So and same thing with VC wares and uh, the jeweled bird, all these specialty retailers have come up with a way, a formula that works that allows them to compete and they're all successful. So from the money standpoint, Pete, these people have figured it out and they're wheeling and they've done a great job. That's great. Um, uh, Now let's talk about the current issue, uh, what that's about, because it's also about wheeling in a whole different direction. I don't know how you come up with all these ideas. (laughs) Yeah, well, the current issue, hold up here. This is called Wheeling Eats Local. So... Again, the same thing. Do you want to uh, be buying all kinds of food that's produced all over the world and shipped in in boxes? Or do you want to connect with local farmers? So it features, and these people on the front cover, uh, Jason Kegler, um, I, I, I can't remember everyone's names, but it, it's inside the cover. So take a look at it. But I know Jason, um, they... Um, they are Grow Ohio Valley. So I don't know if people have heard of Grow Ohio Valley, but they, the main thing they run is a public market. So a lot of people are familiar with the public market, but they, this article gives you all kinds of options on how to, and the whole issue gives you options on how to eat locally. So you can go to the public market and you can buy locally produced foods 
You can buy locally produced um, uh, 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 meat, eggs, everything. It's all available right there, easy to get. And they have all kinds of options for snap uh, purchases and all that to make it affordable for, for people that might have difficulty there. Also, uh, they have a CSA. Does anyone know, has anyone, have you heard of a CSA before? Do you know what that is, Pete? No. It stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is you're purchasing a share of a farm. So you pay ahead of time at the beginning of the season. And then the farmer has that money because farmers are always short on money for financing and all that sort of stuff. So you pay them ahead of time, you buy a share of their production, and then it gets shipped, uh, you pick it up or they some of them deliver, but you can get that through the public market. It's all on their website. So it's a real easy way to bring locally grown meats, produce, uh, vegetables, uh, and also processed foods. They also have things like granola that people make it. It's all local. So you can get all that brought right to your house and it's very, very affordable. So, and they grow Ohio Valley produces a lot of their own food. They have urban farms. They have, they, they took Vineyard Hill. If you, I'm sure you've heard of Vineyard Hill. Have they turn, they have high tower, um, uh, or uh, a long time, I'm probably not calling them the right thing, yeah. but yeah, they produce all their, their um, greenhouses. Okay? <laughs> so they produce all kinds of food and they bring it, uh, bring it to the public market and make it available. Another really cool thing, and this is really good for, especially for your watchers, because your people are always looking for opportunities. They have a new service. It's called the food hub. So they bought a building. And in that building, they're filling it with the basic equipment that someone would need to start a food business. And they're making it available because sometimes it's difficult to get a certified kitchen. Labeling requirements can be difficult. They have all that there. So if there's someone watching right now that has some kind of food product or a recipe, whether it's uh, salsa or or um, uh, some type of breakfast cereal or who knows what a drink or whatever that they make that they fantasize and said, you know, I think this is something that would sell, go to the food hub. They can help you create a business. And some of these business can get very big. So, and we also in this issue featured some local manufacturers of food like Figuretti's. Everyone's had Figuretti sauce. It's made here and shipped all over. Again, local food. We also featured Wheeling Coffee, Wheeling Coffee and Spice. Brewed here, you can go downtown, you can smell it. They bring in coffee, they brew it, and they package it. They sell it all over the place in the, in the local area. So these are some of the, the local manufacturers. And then also Family Roots Farm, they make granola. They're on the you know smaller side. They're getting started. They do granola and they do jams and jellies and all those sorts of things. So you can... And you can buy all that directly at the public market. Again, it's someone who has set up a business to produce and manufacture food and sell it locally. So I think all that's really cool. But the whole purpose is to help people connect with that. One more thing. I know I'm going on and on. One more thing I'll add. So, and I did these, I did these myself. There are, there's one page that has videos where I interviewed local farmers, some local wheeling farmers about organic milk, organic vegetables, grass-fed beef, eggs. You, you know, you go to the store and you see pastured, you see free range, you see uh, 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 unclassified, all these terms with eggs. A, a farmer explains in detail, they're, they're 20-minute shows, but if you watch them, one of them teaches you how to unpack a CSA. So if you actually go to and purchase a CSA, there's a video that tells you exactly how to incorporate it into your family. And you just scan, there's, you know, one of those little code things you scan with your phone takes you right to the video and you can watch them. So this is a really comprehensive issue on everything you need to eat more local food. There's a farmer's market guide. Some people want, might want to buy from farmer's markets. Maybe you have no experience with local food at all. Pete, you can go to the Symphony's Farm to Fork event. I think you've been to that event. 
it's it's spectacular and it's all local food. So if you haven't experienced it, it's a place to go do it. Also, Sarah Miller House up in Wellsburg, they do once a month local locally produced, and they have them all throughout the year. Chef uh, Brian Magliachet produces these spectacular meals. So if you want to get a taste for the difference that locally produced farm, you can go to one of those meals, go with a group of friends and, and, and experience it for the first time. So we have entry points, we have expansion points, and even points where you can start your own business selling locally food. So, so we really tried to make that comprehensive. So I, I hope, hope people enjoy it. Yeah, one of the neat things about the public market is standing there and someone will, a farmer will come in with a box of whatever their product is, and it was you know, two hours fresh, as opposed to something that was grown in California, flash frozen, shipped across the country, working its way into the, the source. And, and you know it's right. And you also know that the farmers are not going to be putting things into their land that might be uh, not very good for, for the rest of us. So I, I feel very comfortable with, the, with their food and it, it is nice to uh, support the local, the local farmer. Could, you couldn't have said it better. That's exactly it. That's, I mean, in that experience of seeing a farmer carrying it in, mm -hmm. that's exactly descriptive. That creates an image of what really goes on at that place as compared to, as you said, stuff being shipped by plane or whatever from uh, into into our regular grocery store. So, yeah, I think that's great. Uh, next issue. Give us a hand. Ah, the next issue. So um, it's called Wheeling's Love Affair with Her Cars. So it's about um, getting people back into their cars and driving and enjoying them. And the articles that we have planned for it are a, uh, a feature on the... Um, the car dealers. So there's these families, and they're all local families that, that own the car dealers, and they've been keeping us in cars for generation after generation. And you know, so we want people to meet these people and get to know them a little bit beyond just the place where you go in to buy your your Honda. You know? So so we're going to do that. Uh, we're also going to cover local car shows because there's a whole bunch of them and they're a lot of fun, especially if you like classic cars. We're, and we're also going to do some features on some people who own classic cars or who collect cars and so that they can share their passion with the readers. Because that's one of the things that we're about at In Wheeling Magazine is giving you the opportunity to share other people's passion for all things that are wheeling or things that they are passionate about themselves. Cause it feels better. If that, this person's passionate about cars and it feels better and you can read it, you feel their excitement. So we try to put that in the articles, you know, and, and, and other news sources. Um, I, I mean, you know, they have to report on the news. Not all of it feels good, but everything in, in wheeling magazine is going to feel good. That's great. Uh, how do you come up with your ideas for an issue? How many, how many um, issues do you have? Let's put it that way. Because I mean, you still have to come up with hundreds more. Yeah. Um, well, we've been doing it for almost 17 years now. So, uh, and, and people said early on, you're going to run out of ideas. You're going to run out of content. It's wheeling. We haven't even scratched the surface. So, and I'll tell you how the ideas come from a number of sources. Sometimes people call in just out of the blue and say, you really need to do an issue on this, that, or the other. And, and I listen to it and I, and I do it. And uh, not always, it just depends on, it's got to fit in. So, and then I, I also sit down with a couple of our writers and our graphic designer every December. And we talk about, well, where do we want to go with, the, with the, this, this, this year? And we come up with a theme for the year. And, um, and then, and then we work, work that theme. We come up with ideas and some, I don't know, Pete, somehow it all just falls together. It just, people show up, the right, right person comes, the right writer comes and, uh, and we continue getting support from our advertisers to make it financially viable, um, which, I mean, we, we have advertisers 
that it, they never question it. It's just about, they just want to support it because they know it's good for the community. And if it's good for the community, it's also ultimately good for their business in the long run. So people in Wheeling, they look much more broader than you see and much deeper than, than I think in other communities. And that's one of the reasons why we've been able to survive is because they look broader and, and more deeply into what we're doing and say, we're supporting this because this is ultimately good for, for all of us. So, um, so that we're very thankful for that. That leads into my next question. Uh, you distribute this into Pittsburgh. How about a great I mean, just I'm, I'm sorry, you broke up just a little bit. Give me that question again. How radius do you distribute the magazine? I know you take it into Pittsburgh. And the, the follow up to that would be um, how much business do you think it drives to women, your magazine? It, it's, I mean, it's hard to say exactly how much. All I can give you is anecdotal stories. So I run into people who are on our demographic mailing list in Pittsburgh and Washington on occasion. And I hear things like, I love that magazine. We save them for long weekends when we want something to do that's close by. So I hear that a lot. And, and, and then also I, I heard from restaurants that we did a feature on, they said, you know, we did a feature on, you did a feature on a restaurant and our reservation book was all filled with 412 phone numbers and 724 phone numbers. That's so, it, I mean, and so from those stories, uh, it sounds like it works. Um, I, I know a lot of people have said that they've been inspired to go to Ogilvy or they've been inspired to go to the, um, uh, the museums, the museums in Moundsville, uh, the Independence Hall. They've come, uh, have come down to see that because they didn't know about these things. So uh, I think it helps. Um, and that's specifically why we send, it's pushing 2,000 magazines go um, in the Pittsburgh area. And some of them also go into the, uh, the Eastern Ohio area that's kind of beyond uh, St. Clairsville and so on to draw in from that side too. So, yeah, and we got feedback from our advertisers early on that they were interested in something like that. So we did it and it's, we've been doing it for 17 years. That's terrific. Um, my show is focusing more and more on entrepreneurs uh, since I've given up my license. I'm not allowed to give out advice. So I have to really watch what I'm saying. So I've been working with a lot of entrepreneurs. 17 years ago, 18 years ago, you came up with this idea. And I'm sure that, well, you tell us the story again, because you started making a profit almost immediately. It yes. had to be a lot of risk involved for you. Some times it might have gotten a little skinny for you. What would you say to uh, tell us a little about that, and then what you would say to an entrepreneur that wants to invent the next widget, whatever, not yeah. necessarily a magazine? Um, I would say that the thing that made the decision easy for Dominic Cerrone and I to go forward with it was a little bit of research. Okay, and I think that's very important. You have to do a little market research, see how many competitors exist. How does it work in other areas? You know, if you, if you do a little research, it, it helps cl clear the air and see if you have something. So our research indicated that most cities the size of Wheeling had a magazine and a nice one. Not all, but it, they were there. So we looked at magazines in those cities to see how viable. Were they coming and going? Were they in and out? And the answer was no. There was usually one or two magazines and they were long-term viable. So we said, okay, that's a, that's a good indication. Wheeling doesn't have one. There was some uh, magazine that was an Ohio Valley magazine that it was, it was not what most cities, they would have a high, most of them, even these small cities had a high quality magazine with high gloss and so on and just promoting their city and so on. And they were independent. They were not owned by the government. These were set, these are profit uh, for profit businesses that were successful. So that research helped enormously. So then the next thing is you have to sit down. And you have to figure out who's going to do 
your printing or who, in the case of any, in general, someone starting a business, who are your suppliers going to be? Where, where are you going to locate? And then you start creating your, uh, your cost structure. And you also start looking at the market saying, well, how much advertising in this, in, in our case, advertising, do we think we can sell? And we made some estimates and they were not far off from what we got. So I think the only thing that we're, we thought we would sell more full page ads than we did, but to something I said earlier, it made sense. A lot of these businesses in Wheeling, they're very wise. They've been around a long time. They looked and said, this ad size is something we will be able to sustain through thick and thin. So very wisely, they picked an ad and said, this is something we're, we want to support this long term. From day one, they looked at it and said, this is good. So we got that for entrepreneurs, keep in mind, if you go out to customers and you test ideas and you get really good reassuring comments from them, that's important. If you don't get good reassuring comments, you might want to re-examine. So again, no competitors, uh, good feedback from potential customers. So, uh, and then we also planned out our costs and it looked from our cost planning that we could make money at it. So you look at how much it costs, how much you think is going to come in. Can you make money? And it's the indica indicated, yes, that there was a there would be a profit margin. So which makes it viable long term. So we went ahead with it. Then you have to keep this is one thing you really have to keep in mind as an entrepreneur. The money doesn't come right away. Even if the sales come right away, which they did within Wheeling Magazine, we sold $16,000 worth of ads, which is about 50% 50, 50 of, what you, of what you need to, to, to sustain the magazine in two weeks when we first started. So uh, the second issue, we had sold enough to pay for the entire magazine, but you have to cover that gap with money because when you send out those invoices, that money doesn't come in in 10 seconds. It comes in in a month, a month and a half, you know, sometimes two months. So you have to have money to cover that gap. So, and it's not a ton, but I think we we needed about 20, 15 or twenty thousand dollars to cover that, which within a year and a half we had taken. Or it was less than a year. We had recovered all of the money that we put in to cover that gap and began generating and accumulating profits. So, but that's about planning and about looking at the numbers and, and also running it by potential customers. We had a focus group too. We brought in some people from around Wheeling and said, look at this magazine, look at these ad prices, get some feedback. And you have to be careful because some people are negative on everything. Um, and one of the feedback we got was something you said. They said, well, how, you're going to run out of ideas. And we knew we wouldn't. So we, you know, discounted that. That's our responsibility. So, but their concern was that. So I hope that helped. One other quick question. Uh, you're, uh, the issues that you're sending to Pittsburgh, these are not subscribers. You're just sending them out to people. Uh, yes. So it comes from, so, um, I've been doing a lot of, trips to the Columbus airport recently um, and uh, being an old guy I have to make a stop once in a while and the, the state of Ohio and West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Utah have these uh, places, you know, sponsored by the state where you can go in and they carry lots of, uh, you know, Belmont County, Ohio or Zanesville, Ohio uh, printed by, by the state. Do you, are you able to get in Wheeling into any of those places where they is forbidden? I mean, you have to give it away for free, but um, is that something you've tried or is it just not permitted? Yes. No, um, it, we, we've, yes, we have done that and it is permitted. Um, some of those, the, for instance, the uh, St. Clairsville courthouse, we give them, they get an, an older, a back issue. And mm -hmm. there's, there's tons of them available. It's a back issue and people eat them, eat them up. We also, we've had them at the visitor centers. And Pete, I tell you, it was as easy as walking in and saying to the person at the front desk, can, can we hand, can we have you give these magazines out to visitors? And, and they did, you know, so 
Um, really, any I found any of those places that you're talking about that are, like for instance, uh, regional red, regional economic development, the chamber, all those just in wheeling, we go, we give them magazines. So, and also we worked with the chamber in St. Clairsville, we give them magazines. So they've been very, if that, is that what you're asking? You're talking, meaning getting these magazines into these visitor centers along the uh, interstate. Uh, yes. And, now, of course, again, they may be driving to Wyoming, not really have much interest in wheeling, right. but it would, seems to me it would be a neat uh, distribution uh, place. It, you know, and, and, and they're, they, they're, they go over well at those visitor centers because people, when they're stopping, a lot of people stop in wheeling for whatever, you know, sometimes they spend the night in the wheel in wheeling when they're traveling. It's, you know, it's a good location so they can pick up a magazine and they can find a great place to go eat. So they look for ads for, um, you know, and sometimes they need car service too. So they see ads for the car deal. Oh, there's a, there's a Jeep dealer in St. Clairsville close by, you know, Thomas or uh, Toyota. We can go to Robinson Toyota, you know, we hear that and get our oil change because we're at our, you know, we just passed our 3000 mile or whatever. So it, uh, people appreciate them. Um, the Highland sports complex, sometimes people are passing through and uh, they're looking for a place to, you know, go play tennis for a day while they're, while they're on their break or something like that, or, um, uh, or even a gym. So that the Howard Long Wellness Center or any, any of the, you know, they're, they're looking for amenities and it's one of the, the ways the Wheeling CVB has a lot of publications that cover that too. So yeah, th those visitor centers, they'll take anything you give them. That's great. Yeah. Again, I'm visiting them a lot recently. Well, I want to thank you for your time and it's mostly for your, uh, you, you mentioned about the naysayers. It's so nice to have such a positive thing going on in Wheeling. And uh, then not just keeping it in Wheeling, but sharing it with the rest of the, uh, the region. So thank you for all your hard work and keep it up. Oh, we will. Great. I'm Pete Holloway. We'll be seeing you next week. I hope you have a great week. Hi, my name is uh, Ken Sexton. I am a professor at West Liberty University. And in my spare time, I spend it in these older homes, uh, rehabilitating them. So, for example, the house that I'm in currently was on fire in 2015, and it's at dormant for around seven years. The house is a small craftsman-style house, which makes it pretty easy to work on. So, um, we were able to uh, remodel it so that uh, it could be a livable house again and not uh, be a vacant lot. Most of the houses I purchase for me have to have some unique characteristics still left from them that it hasn't been dismantled or covered up. So I usually drive around wheeling on the weekends looking for these houses and then uh, I investigate either through the city or tax offices or, and then I purchase them at a fairly decent price and then uh, re uh, remodel them or renovate them. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu.